Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? All right. Well, we got the good whiskey out tonight. Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> Love me some Willet, man. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough that I had a family member travel out of state <laughs> so they could get this for me. So can't yeah. get it here. Yeah. No. Uh, Dude, we haven't had it available here in years now. It's been no, a while. No, it's it has. I don't know why. It's so good. I, I remember. Uh, what was it was it last year that we went to when we went to Houston? Houston? I think it may have been two years. I'm not I, sure. Yeah, I can't remember. It's yeah, been it's a while. Yeah, really. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Anyway, it, like we hadn't been able to get it here at all, and they had shelves full of it. Yeah. <laughs> like it, they were literally littered with it everywhere we went. They had. I was like, man, yeah. this is amazing. Man, man I the- spent like four hundred dollars on booze <laughs> on that trip. It was terrible. <laughs> Well, I remember they had like the big bottles of Willet, and I wish I had mm-hmm. bought one of those just to have the bottle. Yeah. Because it's the pot still, you know? Yeah. Well, that's why I wanted to finish this off tonight. Uh, my mom wanted the bottle, so. Ah, it know, is a neat one. bottle. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I guess more or less right into it. I think we got a lot to cover tonight. I mm-hmm. hope that this. I hope that this goes well. I hope that you guys like this. So, let me know if you do, um, because I did a ton of research for this. Uh, episode and if you don't like it then i don't want to spend so much time doing research <laughs> yeah when you called me last night man it was like you're like throwing all this stuff at me i was like man you've done like way more reading than i have <laughs> yeah um so, I'm, i was impressed actually well and here's another thing there's a couple of things that brought this to mind and i'll go over them in a minute and another thing is like when i started taking notes this time i was also uh um copying uh links to the articles at the beginning. I gave up on that pretty quickly. If you look at my notes here, like, yeah. Um, but it, so this is another one of those things that if people are interested, I will try and make more of an effort to do this type of thing. Yeah. To just copy links on my sources, yeah. um, as I'm going through this stuff and we can post it, uh, in, on some other page on the website, potentially like, yeah. um, we, I, I created a Liberty notes page, uh, which was intended for something else, but we haven't used it. Um, and it could turn into just like show notes, yeah, more or less. Uh, although it might not come up at the same go up at the same time as the podcast because it will take me a little bit to like put it to together, put but, a, pull it all together. Um, and uh, but again, you know, it, that's a that's a bunch of extra work. And so if people aren't interested. Yeah. then I don't really want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, if that people, time could be spent elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. If people are interested, though, I'm more than happy to. Um, so just let me know. Uh, yeah. Also, by the way, at this moment, the Michael at the – well, the LibertyMike.com emails are not functioning. Yeah. Um, I am having a little uh, disagreement with my hosting provider. And yeah. I will probably be changing that. The website's still up, though, so, yeah. you know, at least we have that. But we don't have email right now yeah. um, because they decided they didn't want to support it anymore. And, oh, well, unless I pay them uh, an exorbitant fee, which <laughs> I think is – and that's just for one email. And, like, yeah. actually – Not doing that. Liberty Larry doesn't use his Liberty Mike <laughs> email, but he had had one I did before have this. One. Yeah. I'll stop. Um, so. so, anyway, I'm – I'm definitely changing hosting providers, so we'll probably have Liberty Mike emails up again. Yeah. But right now, I'm not receiving any of that. And anything you send before I change hosts will never get to me because there's no way that the current <laughs> host is going to give me that. Is going to send that over data. So anyway, yeah. Um. So we'll jump r- right into it. And so this is what made me like took me down this path, I guess. Um. Is and I'm gonna try and draw a line between the the thing that happened 50 years ago and the thing that happened last week. Okay. Um, and we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if it works. So uh, last week was the 50th anniversary of um, of Seymour Hersh's articles uh, on the My Lai massacre in uh, Vietnam. Okay. So um, he put out the first of his. I think it was five articles. Um, he put out the first of them in um, on November twelfth, nineteen sixty nine. The actual events occurred uh, March nineteen sixty eight. It was it was really two separate villages that were involved. Um, it had uh, Mai Lai and Mai Kei uh, massacres occurred on the same day. 
um, essentially. And so just the, like the short version of the story is that the, well, we're not, I'm not really given a short version of the story probably, but, um, <laughs> what short happened was <laughs> during the Vietnam war, um, there were, uh, some areas that were suspected to be involved with, the uh, have Viet Cong connections. Um, and so, they sent in uh, U.S. troops um, to go through these villages and see if they could find um, any VC hiding or supplies or anything that was going to help potentially the enemy. So they went into these villages, and there weren't really any military-aged males because the country was at war. Yeah. Um, and uh, they they ended up slaughtering all the people in these villages. Yeah. And so the current accepted count, um, and these are like little Vietnamese villages, right? Like yeah. Thatch huts and what have you. Um, the The current accepted count is that there were 504 victims of the U.S. military assault. Um, wow. 24 full families were obliterated. Um, like yeah. no survivors of the entire family. Three generations of people from the family killed on this day. Wow. Um, and like, I hesitate to urge you to go look up the pictures because there oh. are pictures from this no, and I, they're I've, I've horrifying. Seen, I've seen the pictures from, I want to say I saw them when we were in school. Although yeah. I, I, I'm, I've seen the pictures at any rate. And no, I'm with you. Like, I, 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 Honestly, I don't recommend it. It's, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's like it's, it's bad. Yeah, piles of women and children. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and so the villages were almost completely populated on these on this day with uh, women, children, and old men, or old because yeah, everybody women, else was off men. the wall, war. Right. Um, so included in those victims uh, with the twenty four families, there were one hundred and eighty two women were killed. Seventeen of them were pregnant. Wow. Um, one hundred and seventy three. 173 children were killed, 56 of them infants. Yeah. Right. Um, and this is one of many slaughters of civilians that was covered up by the U.S. government. And so, uh, like I said, it was reported by Seymour Hersh on November 12, 1969, and, and people were horrified about it. It was kind of uh, amazing, and, and it had a real impact. Um, and, the, you know, part of the impact was that like the government had intentionally tried to cover up this information. What had happened? Obviously. Yeah. Um, but there were a few people that got away in. Uh, so I, I read a little bit about, and, and it feeds into what we talk about now, which is that by our involvement in the Middle East and Afghanistan and, and what have you, we're creating more enemies. Yeah. We're, you know, we're not we're not reducing our. We're not increasing our security. We're reducing our security. And so, um, you know, the best example of that is that uh, at on 9-11, there were about 400 al-Qaeda members across the Middle East and North Africa. Yeah. About 400. Take those numbers now. Today, there's about 40,000. Exactly. Right. So we have, we have not made the world a safer place. And so uh, it was interesting to me reading this um, account from one of these survivors. And I'm, I'm going to butcher these Vietnamese names, by the way. <laughs> um, but uh, Vo Cao Loi uh, survived the Mai Cave massacre by hiding at a nearby river. Um, after the massacre, he was taken in by the uh, Viet Cong, um, and he was brought around, essentially, like paraded around to various units to tell the story of the massacre. And yeah. it mobilized the support within the Viet Cong oh, against absolutely. the Americans. It's the, I mean, what else would it do? I mean, yeah. I mean, you just you think about your own country. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's you know, that's how that works. Exactly. And he was a teenager at the time, and as soon as he was old enough to fight, he joined he the did. Viet Cong. I bet he did. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and so that's just just one example, but that I mean, there but, were. But you you have to understand that's the way it works. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and whenever I'm talking to people about these wars and stuff, I mean, that's always the angle I take is, do you think we're seriously more safer now than we were a couple of decades ago? Yeah. I mean, you, you can't, you can't look at the evidence objectively and think that. I, I agree. Um, I think, well, and it, it gets worse than that. Like beyond just this actual massacre, I think the, yeah. the aftermath is, is even worse somehow. So, um, 
you know, it was supposed to be a mistake, essentially, and, you know, the the way the military was reporting stuff is that they were trying to keep civilian casualties low, um, but that's not, I, I mean, it came out later that that wasn't entirely the case, yeah. um, that the U.S. Army policy was only to keep civilian casualties low in what they considered to be disputed territories. Um, yeah. The uh, uh, areas that had been under communist control for a long period of time, I don't know what a long period of time amounts to. I never found that defined. But <laughs> yeah. um, a long period of time were considered free fire zones. And they didn't make any distinction between combatants and non-combatants. Yeah. Um, so in the case of these villages, they were in these long-term communist-controlled areas. Yeah. And so, and they just wiped the villages out. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um, mean, and there wasn't any particular reason for it that I could come across. Yeah. Other than, I mean, but, I mean, and I wasn't alive during this time, so don't take me wrong, but I, I feel like the, the theme during this time was just to wipe out communism at any any way possible. And so just just by just destroying these villages, that's what they, I mean, they felt like they were wiping out the communist threat. Yeah, and even, as far as they were concerned, they were combatants, even yeah. though it was women and children. Yeah, yeah. You know. Which is, and there probably was some support for the Viet Cong there. I mean, they were probably yeah. feeding them, and and you know, sure there's probably a place that where they stayed some at least. Well, I mean, which side are you going to pick? I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah the the crazy uh, American military, these guys that are dropping in with all these equipment and and can't speak your language and don't know your customs are the people that you've known your whole life. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so they had, uh, apparently they had directive five twenty five dash three, and it made it clear that the U S military's com- uh, commands policy was to consider the civilian population in long-term communist base areas as the enemy, which could be subjected to the same treatment as communist military personnel. And, uh, in his memoirs years later, general Westmoreland wrote that, um, once the, quote, free fire zones, end quote, were established, quote, anybody who remained had to be considered an enemy combatant. Um, and operations in those areas uh, could be conducted without fear of civilian casualties because they decided nobody was a civilian. Yeah, yeah. That's... Now, and, and just think about that in realistic terms, right? It's like if, uh, you know... We'll say this is a Republican-controlled territory here down in South Alabama. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. Um, and the, let's say that somebody came in and said that the Republicans were terrible people. I can't imagine that yeah. happening anywhere, right? But um, And they said, uh, well, but in, in any of the Republican strongholds, uh, anybody who's there is considered a combatant. Yeah. And, like, say they even warn us. Like, if you're down there, right. then you're you're considered part of the enemy. Yeah. Like, I'm, like I, how gonna, easy is it to pick up and move yeah. a whole and, family? And why do I want to? Like, yeah. this is my this is my area. And this like, is in the internet age. We're talking about tiny little Vietnamese villages in 1968. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? Like they could even know this. Yeah. Um. So it's, it's kind of insane. And and the worst part of it though is that there was only one person um, who was ever convicted of anything related to the My Lai massacre. Really? Um, and that was Lieutenant William Kelly, who was the the command on the ground, like at the time. Yeah. Um, and he was convicted to a life sentence, but he was released after a couple of years. Really? Yep. Um, and in March 1970, they did an investigation. They filed charges against 14 officers for the event and the cover up. Uh, only one of them faced court martial, and he was found not guilty. Really? So really, nobody got in trouble for this. Wow! Wow! It's insane. And you're going to see that that's the point of all of these stories. Yeah. Oh, I don't doubt it. I um, mean. So the what that made me think of, though, then, is like as long as we're dealing with Vietnam, let's let's hit some of these older ones so that we yeah. know that the our government's been doing this for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so uh, I thought, well, you know, what about the Pentagon Papers yeah. um, that were released by Daniel Ellsworth? And... Um, and what it showed and, and how that ended, right? Yeah. So um, the Pentagon Papers was essentially the CIA's secret history of Vietnam, going back to right after World War II. Really? Where we'd been involved that entire time in some form or One fashion. capacity, yeah, or another. Yeah. Um, now, the big, most important part of it, probably, that was released in these papers was the... Um, the real story of the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Now, this the Gulf of Tonkin incident is what yeah. drew us into the Vietnam War officially, or the okay. Vietnam conflict, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, 
So it was reported as some um, North Vietnamese torpedo boats fired onto the destroyer, the USS Maddox, unprovoked on August 2nd, and then again on August 4th. Um, and it, you know, directly led this story to the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, the official beginning of the, the Vietnam conflict. Yeah. Um, now, what the Pentagon Papers revealed was that the US Mad- USS Maddox fired first on August 2nd, <laughs> and the August 4th inf- incident didn't happen at all. <laughs> See, now that leads into to where I've done some reading myself with the um, uh, Operation Northwood. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever heard of this, or I know when I mentioned it to you, it didn't ring any bells. Mm-hmm. But um, basically what it was, was this was, this was before Vietnam. Um, when I guess the, the communism was still like a big thing and the U S wanted to get involved in Cuba and go to war with Cuba. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically it was, um, this was, a, a, a proposed operation from the U S department of defense and the joint chiefs of staff. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically what they wanted to do was have create terrorist events in the U S and blame mm-hmm. them on Cuba. Um, that's, I mean, that's basically what it boiled down to. They were trying to do, and um, and eventually, once it got to um, President Kennedy, he didn't sign off on it. Yeah. But it actually made it through all the channels up to that far. Yeah. Um, and could have very easily, if if Kennedy hadn't have been who he was, could have went all. That. I mean, they could have actually went, followed through on some of that. I remember that now. Once you said what it was about, I was like, yeah. Oh yeah, okay, I remember. <laughs> yeah. Well, that. I figured you had heard of it, just yeah. maybe not heard of the the term used for it or mm-hmm. whatever. But I mean, the, the government will do these type of things. I mean, it's it's just it blows my mind that I heard the term used for it before. There's just oh, only so much room up here. Like, <laughs> I hear you, man. <laughs> Eventually, some stuff has to fall well, out to make room for new stuff. Well, I was surprised when I mentioned it the other day, and you you drew a blank on it. Yeah, so. yeah. But I mean, but it, just like what you're talking about here, I mean, it's it's just insane to me that mm-hmm. that stuff like this can can even go on, you know. Well, and, and it's that same fear of communism, the spread of communism, yeah. which that, is what this was. This yeah. it was it was the same thing. It was well, they're right on our borders with this communism, and it's yeah. going to s- spill over. Well, that's know? what I'm saying. I, I'm like yeah. drawing it back to this. Like what? what yeah. Another thing that the Pentagon Papers revealed yeah. um, was that the U.S. had increasing involvement in Vietnam, beginning right after World War II, and the whole purpose of it was to contain communist China. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they were, you know, manipulating governments, uh, and in fact, um, both installing uh, and toppling um, Ngo Dinh Diem in South Vietnam. So the the OSS slash CIA, uh, yeah. and this came from Edward Lansdale, by the way, um, in the Pentagon Papers. But he was a, a member of the OSS and then the CIA. So the Office of Strategic Services is what it was in World War II. Yeah. Changed its name to the Central Intelligence Agency later. It's okay. the same organization. It's the same group, just different letters. <laughs> yeah. So um, the the CIA, we'll just, we'll just call we'll it just the CIA. We'll just call him the CIA, yeah. yeah. The CIA um, installed this guy, uh, Ngo Dinh. Diem in South Vietnam um, to be the president down there. And then in 1963, they uh, sponsored a coup to take him out of power. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and uh, then, you know, it also revealed that the U.S. had expanded the war into Cambodia and Laos, yeah. uh, which was not a part of the resolution. And they were saying that the the war was contained within Vietnam. They denied any involvement in any any other nations. Uh, it turned out to be a lie. Imagine of that. Of course, yeah. Um, and uh, it, it exposed that the the Truman, that, so four consecutive presidential administrations, yeah. Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, and Johnson uh, had clearly intentionally misled the public on the U.S. involvement in uh, Southeast Asia and specifically Vietnam. Yeah. Um, Ellsberg, uh, Daniel Ellsberg, who actually, like I said, released the documents. Uh, said that the documents, quote, demonstrated unconstitutional behavior by a succession of presidents, the violation of their oath, and the violation of the oath of every one of their subordinates. And just to remind people, um, when you uh, when you become a um, public officer in the United States, yeah. um, you have to take a you have to take an oath of office, um, and it includes. Uh, that and this is for the military as well. They say something like this, but yeah. like I think both uh, both oaths 
um, include this same essential General, wording, yeah. um, which is uh, that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and that I will bear truth, faith, and allegiance to the same. Right. Yeah. And then, of course, the president takes a slightly different oath. Um, he uh, swears to faithfully execute the office of president and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. This yeah. is where the loyalty lies as to the Constitution. Yeah. And, you know, we've been talking about this for 30 episodes <laughs> now um, yeah. that nobody really seems to even know what's in it anymore. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, um, you know, so they they had grossly um, exploited their position to do something that was absolutely and totally illegal. Absolutely. And every single one of them. Yeah. And, um, and then again, you know, back to the, the bad part of this is that the only person who ever was prosecuted was Daniel Ellsberg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he didn't even serve a portion of his sentence. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he uh, was prosecuted under the Espionage Act. Um yeah. He was actually freed due to mistrial because uh, the Nixon administration broke into Ellsberg's uh, psych- psychiatrist's office. Psychologist, psychiatrist. Yeah. I don't know which. Um, Ellsberg's psychiatrist, his shrink's office. Okay. <laughs> uh, attempted to bribe the judge in oh, the case really? with an FBI directorship yeah. and, you know, quote unquote, lost records of the illegal wiretapping of Daniel Ellsberg. Wow. Um, so even the even the judge said, uh, quote, the totality of the circumstances of this case, which I've only briefly sketched, offend a sense of justice. Wow. And so he, he wasn't acquitted, but it, it was a mistrial and he was freed. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this led to some other things that now seem to have more impact. So yeah. this uh, came to the Supreme Court because they were trying, the U.S. government was also trying to prosecute uh, the various media outlets that released the Pentagon Papers. Ah, right? yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, they they tried to uh, to get an injunction. Um, the Supreme Court ruled that the media outlets can continue publishing papers uh, ruling against the injunction by the White House. Um, and Justice Black, at the time he wrote for the, the majority, yeah. uh, said, uh, quote, "...only a free and unrestrained press can effectively expose deception in government." And paramount among the responsibilities of a free press is the duty to prevent any part of the government from deceiving the people and sending them off to distant lands to die of foreign fevers and foreign shot and shell. End quote. Good men. Yeah. Good um, words. But, of course, that's not happening now. And no, we'll get we're... to some of that later, too. <laughs> yeah. So at, at this point, I thought, well, you know, we can jump ahead. Right? Yeah. So, but just, you know, bear in mind at this point that that in these cases so far, and we'll see this again and again, yeah. um, is that the only person who ever gets prosecuted in any real way, I mean, other than Lieutenant Kelly, but like I said, yeah. he was responsible for 400 murders, essentially, um, and served a couple of years. He's the one that only served, like, not even a portion of his time. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in the Pentagon Papers, it was a bunch of presidents and government officials and military officials who had committed crimes, and the only person prosecuted was the person who told the public. Yeah. Um, they, uh, you know, they tried to stop also, you know, speaking of the My Lai Massacre, they tried to stop um, Seymour Hersh from publishing his stuff, obviously, yeah. too. Went after him as best they could for, you know, um, what is it, uh... Secret information, top secret information, oh, yeah, or yeah. what have classified. you. Classified. Yeah. Pu- publish them classified information. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought I would try and bring it more to something that we can all relate to that we've lived through. Well, I was going to say, because I mean, when this all took place in what, like the 60s, yeah, 70s? Yeah, late 60s. Yeah. It's, it's not like <laughs> more of the stuff didn't happen during, like, up until now. Like, this is... It it just it's always that's that's how government mm-hmm. operates. Yeah, and I uh, you know I'm going to give less background on this because most of us should should know at least some of what was going on here. Yeah. Um. So of course the the next big thing I would say would be the CIA torture program. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is as part of the terror wars. Yeah. And say something while I take a drink. <laughs> well, I don't know what to say. I mean, we all remember, you know, the the torture stuff from. I mean, that all started basically in what two thousand one. That nine eleven was in two thousand one, right? Yeah. Um. Probably two thousand two, two thousand three. Yeah. I, I remember. I, don't really I know. remember it coming up. So I remember. I remember nine eleven happened, mm-hmm. and I remember when we started the war in Iraq. 
which was a little ways after 9-11. What, maybe a year after 9-11? Oh, well, yeah, I guess Because so. we went in Afghanistan first. Yeah. Um, and then we went into Iraq after that. And that's about when I remember starting to hear about the torture programs and mm-hmm. stuff. Well, uh, Bush the Younger. Yeah. I like I like to use... Uh, <laughs> the, the Younger. <laughs> yeah. I, I like to use monarch, like... Names well, I mean, they basically we, are. I yeah, mean, <laughs> we had uh, we had King George, King Barry, and now we have the Don. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, but uh, Bush the Younger, um, the administration authorized the, the, the enhanced interrogation, yeah. um, including waterboarding, uh, stress positions, physical assault. Um, all of this in direct contravention to the uh, Geneva Conventions. Absolutely, right. the thing where they pop your fingernails out. Is that one of them? Maybe. I don't, I don't remember. It's, I, That's I, always the one that gives me the heebie jeebies. I, I, I didn't, I didn't like read too deeply into this because uh, torture just kind of sickens me. It's like, yeah. I, I can't. No, I'm with you, man. <laughs> I can't. Fingernail like, thing, though. Ooh, I can't like, do it. This is, torture has been the end of many of my interests in TV shows. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> the, once you get to the like torture stuff, I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm done with this. I yeah. just, I, I can't. Watch I don't this. need to see all that. Yeah, like I, I'm not into snuff films really. Yeah. It just doesn't do it for me. Um, but uh, you know, all of this stuff resulted in at least two deaths. Really? Uh, okay. Of prisoners. Of prisoners. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now and then, you know, uh, King Barry didn't help things out either. Uh, like Obama administration yeah. continued the policy. Um, through and, and but not directly, he did it in a more creative way. So oh, they, did he? He they distances himself <laughs> exactly. It, yeah. That's exactly what they did. So yeah. they, they had the extraordinary rendition, um, is what they call it. So they mm-hmm. they would send uh, detainees to countries known for their brutality, like <laughs> Somalia, uh, Iraq, <laughs> Afghanistan, yeah. Syria. Yeah. Like our our buddy Assad in Syria was more than happy to torture Take for these us people back in. Then. Yeah. Um, then he became an enemy somewhere along the way. But yeah, and uh. <clears throat> so, but in, in this was after uh, John Kiriakou was the whistleblower on this one. Okay. Um, John Kiriakou exposed uh, that the CIA was engaged in waterboarding um, prisoners and detainees. Uh, he let this. He he released this information in two thousand seven and said unequivocally that he considered it to be torture. Yeah, I mean, what else would you call it? I mean, well, I mean, there was a big debate about that. Right? I remember like, is it was, waterboarding torture. Or not? Yeah, no, um, I remember the debate. But, I mean, I know where I always fell on it, I mean. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, the whole thing was absurd anyway because there has not been any evidence that torture yields any actionable information. Yeah. Like, th- at the time that this was all a big deal, like, the government was making the claim that they'd stopped a bunch of terrorist attacks because of this and so forth. But it, yeah. it was later revealed that they didn't really have any evidence for that at all. No. Um, that there was no- I mean, people are going to tell you whatever, when when they're being tortured that way, mm-hmm. they're going to tell you whatever they can to stop the torture. Yeah, yeah. they're going to say whatever they think is good. They think you want to hear. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Um, not that I have a problem, I mean, like I say, these people are scum of the earth as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I'm not going to take defense of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, you know, it, it doesn't seem right to, it's, I still have a problem with torture. <laughs> yeah, well, and I've had, you know, I've been, because the way I work my way through some of this stuff is I just talk to the people around me. Yeah. Um. So I've talked to some people about this over the last couple of days, and I've gotten, uh, you know, similar kinds of, of points. Like, well, you know, what did they do to Americans that they captured and things oh, like that? I'm, I'm like, sure. okay, yeah, I'm, I mean, and I, I can I can understand that point of view, but the whole thing is that, do you want to be like them? Is yeah, that well, the goal in all this? Exactly. And that's that's the reason I can't stand behind the torture. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, while, while I get that these people are scum of the earth, and I'm all for rounding them up and doing what we need to do to ones that we are sure this, have done things like this, I still can't condone torturing them. <laughs> well, that's the, and that's the unfortunate because, side effect, though, is that there's yeah. been a whole lot of people that have been caught up in this, that yeah. have been tortured, that were released without... Any charges being filed, well, and, and that were shown to be innocent people that were well, and just not a part of this at all. Well, yeah, and that, but that's kind of the problem <laughs> with being over there in the first place is that it, it just like just like law enforcement here in the states, they kind of have to justify their job. Yeah. So, like, we can't be over there trying to catch the terrorist and not catch terrorists. Yeah. So, like, then the definitions of what a terrorist is can start becoming loose. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean. 
And that's and and it's no different here in the states with with law enforcement. They have to justify their job. I mean, they can't be just driving around not catching criminals. <laughs> exactly. So if we can't find any criminals, we'll make we'll some. make some yeah. exactly. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's definitely. But I I mean, at any rate, going back to the torture thing, like I can't stand behind torture no matter who they are. I've been trying to think of this event, and maybe you'll remember because I actually think I brought it up on the podcast. And I was looking back through my notes, I couldn't find it. Um, but there was something that came up on a TV program that I was watching and, you know, something about like the U S had allowed citizens to do something or other, oh, say yeah. something or other, do something or other. I can't, I can't remember exactly what it was. And yeah. the person had said, well, China would never allow this kind of thing. <laughs> and I thought, what are you talking? Well, we don't want to have China's government. <laughs> yeah, I know what you- I remember. It was a reference to something that had happened. I know what you're talking about. I can't remember the the specifics on it though. But but you're right. Yeah, but you're exactly right. Like that's not. When did that become the standard? Right. <laughs> yeah. Like why is this? It's <laughs> yeah. like the exact opposite of what we want. Yeah. Exactly. And, and like and that's another point. This is as good a time as any to make the point is that. Like this country started with a very limited, constrained federal government yeah. that the whole goal of the Constitution was to 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 um, give the most power to the people. Yeah. The the most rights, the most liberty to the people. Absolutely. And, and I, I was reminded today, I was reading about something else. Um but I, I was reminded about the the Ninth Amendment to the Constitution. Nobody ever talks about. Um yeah. Because there's been all these court cases uh, recently where they say, well, there's nothing in the Constitution that gives this right to people. But the Ninth Amendment says that um, just because a particular right has been omitted from this Constitution doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Really? Yeah. It says that, you know, this isn't supposed to exclude any rights to be retained by the people, essentially. Yeah. Um, So just because it's not in the Constitution doesn't mean that it's not that the government can... Can um, infringe can upon overstep it. it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Interesting. I may have to go back and reread that. That's <laughs> that's an interesting. Yeah, I, the ninth and tenth amendments were supposed to really do like like, like really bring it all together. The federal government, yeah. like this is you know what the powers that we've given you yeah. are the only powers that you get. Have yeah, um, and that's what the ninth and tenth amendment were supposed to do. And of course, that's been completely ignored. It's been taken completely the other direction of course you know federal judges right like they work for the same entity and why wouldn't they give it more power exactly or interpret the constitution in a way to give it more power which i mean honestly any libertarian i think if we had a truly constitutional sized government i don't think we would be complaining very much yeah i mean not to say like i mean i know some of us want more government than others or less government than others mm-hmm. but i think that we could all pretty well agree if we had constitutional sized government mm-hmm. we'd be pretty okay with it <laughs> yeah i'm sure that i could find things to complain about yeah but from here if we could get back there i'd be pretty excited yeah oh i think and i think any libertarian would yeah. i mean that's you know it's that's that's the goal <laughs> Well, um, here in this particular torture program, bring us back to that. Yeah. Um, there were uh, so there was an investigation, of course, after the whistleblower. Yeah. Um, they investigated more than a hundred individual t- court, uh, torture cases. That this is the Department of Justice that reviewed these cases. Um, they filed charges on on the two that resulted in death. Okay. That's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. They, they filed charges on the two that resulted in death, yeah. um, but then they declined a prosecution, uh, citing a lack of evidence to convict beyond a reasonable doubt. <laughs> How does that work? I don't know. Explain that one to me. I don't know why it's me. their decision, isn't it? Yeah. You would think it was the jury's decision to determine whether it was a reasonable doubt or yeah. not. Yeah. And I, I mean, mean, especially when people died. Well, that's <laughs> what I was fixing to say. I mean, like, we know these people are dead. So, like, let's start from there and move backwards. Yeah. Like. <laughs> uh, and then there's the other thing. Okay, so they they didn't prosecute anybody for the deaths. Yeah. They also didn't prosecute the guy whose name I didn't write down. Yeah. Um, the guy, uh, the CIA... Uh, I don't know, agent, tech, yeah. whatever his job was, the yeah. CIA employee um, who destroyed like almost 100 videotapes yeah. 
yeah. of tortures or interrogations being performed. Yeah. Intentionally destroying all this evidence that yeah. could have been admissible because, in these cases. Because they knew what it would lead to. They were yeah. like, oh, we can't let this get out. But they didn't prosecute that guy either. Yeah, right. For destroying evidence. Yeah. That, I think, would qualify as an obstruction of justice. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. At the least. I, if it was a couple of months ago, I would call it back to President Trump, but they've completely given up on the obstruction of justice <laughs> yeah, yeah. thing. They're, they got they're, something go, new. they're going a new direction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got something new. It didn't work there. out. Um, so, again, like in... In the Pentagon Papers issue, um, the only person that was prosecuted in any of this uh, was John Kiriakou, the 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 whistleblower. The whistleblower, yeah. 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 Um, And he was, again, prosecuted under the Espionage Act. And he spent – he got sentenced to 30 months. He spent a couple of years in prison. Really? and this is a, a similar story. I, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on this, um, but it was a similar story as uh, the guy Thomas Drake, who was the whistleblower on the NSA's warrantless uh, wireless surveillance. Yeah. Um, this is when they were taking all the uh, records from the phone companies that were being turned over. Like, so, yeah. And he was also prosecuted under the Espionage Act, and nobody mm. that was doing any of this illegal surveillance was prosecuted for anything. No. And that leads us and into the next and thing. And there's really no reason to believe that they ever quit doing that as far as collecting the information. Absolutely. They've been limited in some ways, sort of. Maybe. Um, and so that that's actually a good transition, which was, the next big thing is, the course, the NSA domestic spying program. Yeah. Right. Um, that started probably in 2001. Also, they were given all this freedom to do this kind of thing. It grew out of the Patriot Act uh, mm. that they signed into law, what, six weeks or yeah. something like that after the 9-11 attacks. Which, by the way, just a quick little update. They just, like this week, I think, re-upped it or whatever. Re- yeah. Or- well, it's not the Patriot Act anymore. It's been no. through some changes. Yeah, there. it is. But yeah. it's the same basic bill or whatever yeah uh, well they reauthorized it in 2005 that they, yeah. they only gave them four years so they reauthorized yeah. it in 2005 they split it into like multiple bills at that point it wasn't yeah. just like one big bill anymore okay. um so they reauthorized it in 2005 and then they amended it uh in 2015 with the freedom act and oh, that was right. um the the usa freedom act, freedom act uh, yeah. <laughs> which was in response to the um federal uh, appeals court ruling um, that the use of uh, Section 215 of the Patriot Act to justify bulk data collection of U.S. Um, persons, U.S. citizens, uh, was illegal. Um, now, I don't understand why that was even necessary because yeah. the truth is you can't – like this is a Fourth Amendment violation, right? Yeah. Um, or if you're looking at the privacy thing, it can be a Ninth Amendment violation as well. Uh, yeah. Just because it's not in the Constitution that doesn't it's protected mean, doesn't yeah. mean it's not protected, right? Absolutely. There's a reasonable expectation, I think, yeah. of citizens of a country to, to have some to private information. A, you know, yeah, to yeah. be able to talk on the phone and not have somebody listening in on it. Exactly. Exactly. So. Um, so, uh, you know, I don't know why it was even a question, like I said, because you can't overrule the Constitution with legislation. Yeah. yeah. I'm not supposed to be able to. Yeah. Well, you can't. It's the yeah. ultimate law of the land. Yeah. And um, the founders said from the very beginning that any uh, legislation that was in contravention to the Constitution was not legal. Yeah. Yeah. It is, I, it is the ultimate law, the Constitution yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we don't treat it that way. I was going to say, I wish it was still that way. I mean, it's I mean, it's supposed to be, obviously, but it's it's yeah. not. And what the Freedom Act really did, um, it, it didn't stop any of the spying. It did this, like, fairly typical. We've talked about it in, in terms of uh, law enforcement as well, yeah. um, where you, uh, you try and bypass um, the warrant requirements of the Fourth Amendment by... Uh, by the private company voluntarily, <laughs> we'll say quote unquote, I was voluntarily say, yeah, yeah. Um, providing the records to the government. Yeah. What happens if they choose not to? Exactly. So that becomes the Which, question is it really voluntary? Exactly. Um, and when you have the arm of the government threatening <clears throat> a private organiz- private company that way, is it really voluntary then either? Yeah. Like, I mean, when the government steps in and asks you for something, they're usually not asking. Like, yeah. I mean, you could not give us this, but we're going to make your life hell now. If we had a real free market, this wouldn't be a concern. Yeah. But the the federal government wields so much power over the market that they can choose winners and losers. Yeah. And if you don't play ball, yeah. then, then you're probably going to be chosen to be a loser. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, and of course, the, the whistleblower we know in this one was Edward Snowden. Yeah. 
Um, he uh, in, he revealed in June of 2013 um, the extent of the intelligence agencies. Wow, it's been that long. I yeah. didn't realize it yeah. had been that long. Um, the, their domestic I remember spying. that well when that happened. Yeah, like, this that is was, the... That was, to me, that was like a... And it was for a lot of people. It was one of those moments where, like... You, everybody knew this was going on. It wasn't like we didn't know people were listening in on our phone calls and stuff like that. But like we had evidence. Like we like knew knew it now. Well, and I don't think people really realized the extent of it. Well, no, I'm, and that may be true. Like how deep it went. I mean, yeah. all right, just listen to some some of the things that the Snowden leaks revealed. Yeah, um, they revealed the uh, the Prism program, um, which allowed the government direct access. To uh, Google, like citizens, Google and Yahoo accounts. Yeah. Um, it, the of course the NSA call database where they were just like storing all, all of the wireless phone calls going back and forth. Yeah. Um, actually, it might not just be the wireless phone calls. But, Imagine it was all of them. Yeah. yeah. Um, it revealed. Uh, it also um, confirmed the Verizon turning over their like daily phone records yeah. to the NSA. Yeah. Um, it uh, revealed. Uh, the X key score program that allowed collection of almost anything done on the internet. Yeah. Um, it, uh, it showed that they were paying um, tech companies billions of dollars in taxpayer money for backdoor access to the, to the communications networks. Now just stop and think about that one for a moment. <laughs> yeah. They're stealing your money yeah. and you're using your money to pay other companies so that they can spy on you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Seems like we could cut out the middleman here. <laughs> yeah, I just pay to have somebody spy on myself, right? Yeah, right. I just hire a private eye to keep an eye on me, right? Ooh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, and that's exactly what was happening. Billions. Bill- oh, yeah. Billions of dollars to pay these telecom companies for backdoor access. Yeah. Using our money to pay somebody else off so that they could spy on us. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Um, they uh, they were tracking cell phones, like all this location, location data, yeah. um, searching email content, which yeah. they said that they couldn't do uh, yeah. before that, um, uh, scanning email and uh, instant message contact lists. Um, and then, of course, there was the whole, like, you get it out of the domestic arena, and right. it revealed all that stuff that we were spying on all our allied governments. Yeah. Um, I remember Angela Merkel being really upset <laughs> about uh, how the NSA was, like, tracking all of her stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and dozens of other world leaders. Oh, yeah. And, and I mean, you got to remember, they? this was just a few months after James Clapper sat there in a Senate committee. It was Clapper. <laughs> I was trying to pull the name just now. I was like, yeah. who was that? It, it was Clapper. It, he testified to the Senate Intelligence Committee in March of the same year. And remember, Snowden revealed this stuff in June. Yep. Um in March, that the NSA did not collect Americans' phone records. Yep. Did, was not collecting millions of Americans' phone records. And he played off, well, we don't even have the capability to do that. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and, in front of Congress. Yeah, absolutely. He perjured yeah. himself in front of Congress. Yeah, he absolutely did. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, not like right after that, um, the Intelligence Committee chair, I think he was at the time. Anyway, Representative uh, Mike Rogers. Um, said that there was oversight from the uh, legislative and judicial branches. Um, it was in place to make sure that you know there wasn't anything untoward. Uh, they were getting permission. That there was very strict access requirements, um, and that there was no content uh, that was that was kept. It was just. Um, what, what did they call it? Uh, it was just uh, metadata. Metadata. It right? was metadata. Yep. It's just metadata. All of that a lie. Yeah. Absolute lie. Now, yeah. I, I don't. I, I can't say for sure that Mike Rogers knew better. It could have been that the NSA was telling him all, ex, all of this stuff that they were lying to him. It's possible. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me. No. Well, not uh, a bit. But, I, I mean, I don't know. Somebody was lying there. Somebody that was definitely was... an untruth. Yeah, well, for sure. <laughs> you know. And, uh... And again, um, for all of this, un- uh, this, uh, so no one that was actually involved in this illegal, unconstitutional spying on American citizens has been charged, including James Clapper, who perjured himself who in front of the Senate. absolutely perjured himself, like, no question. The only person that has been uh, charged with anything is Edward Snowden yeah. under the Espionage Act, and he is currently uh, a fugitive in exile in russia yeah uh, yeah and that's that's the way it always goes the people behind the scenes never pay the people who need to pay the price never do and the people who bring out the information 
or end up, you know. Exactly. And I'm not going to spend any time on this, but of course, you know, because we've talked about it uh, probably in a third of the podcast that we've put out, <laughs> yeah. um, is of course the Iraq and Afghan war logs yeah. um, that were leaked by, um, by Manning. Uh, yeah. Through Manning, yeah. let's just say. We'll um, <laughs> yeah, it's always confusing. <laughs> like, uh, what name do I use at the time? It was anyway. Um, yeah, so uh, they were leaked by Manning, um, and they were uh, published by Julian Assange yeah. uh, through WikiLeaks. Um, and what they did, if you're if you haven't been listening to the podcast <laughs> very briefly, yeah. um, they exposed the government's lies about the extent of civilian deaths caused by U.S. forces in both Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, and they exposed war crimes committed by the U.S. military. And both Manning, who leaked the information, and Assange, who published it, are currently incarcerated. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. Um, and then, so here's the through line. This is, this is what made me want to talk about this beyond the, it being the 50th anniversary of the uh, My Lai Massacre. Yeah. Like the public becoming aware of the My Lai Massacre. Is that in the last week... Trump pardoned three soldiers for war crimes. Ah. Oh. Right? Um, so uh, two of them were murders, and uh, one of them was the uh, Navy SEAL who posed with the corpse of the detainee. That I remember. The first two I couldn't remember when you mentioned that the other day, but I remember the guy posing with the corpse. I remember when that happened. Yeah. Well, because it was a big... This is a Navy SEAL. Like, they, these are the great heroes, right? <laughs> yeah. Remember, in the yeah. impeachment proceedings, they keep talking about Vindman. He's a decorated war hero. He's got a purple heart. Therefore, he must be a good guy. Yeah. Well, this was a decorated Navy SEAL. U.S. Special yeah. Operations. Anybody who poses with a corpse... Yeah. Sorry. ...may not be a good guy. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe not. I mean, who knows? But. Yeah. I mean, there's a little bit of a morbidity there that I don't yeah. think can... If it can be understated, really. <laughs> Although I'm <laughs> yeah. trying, yeah. Um, and so yeah, he, he the other two guys. Uh, one of them was an officer who ordered his men to open fire on uh, several. Um, was, I can't remember if it was in Iraq or Afghanistan. I think it was Afghanistan. Uh, so Afghani's uh, on motorcycles. They yeah. didn't pose any kind of apparent threat. They're just young guys yeah. on motorcycles, yeah. and they gunned them down. Yeah. Um, and so he's, you know, he was, uh, convicted of murder for that. Um, the other one was, uh, a guy who got angry when they, they had a detainee. They have a limited amount of time that they can keep him detained without, you know, any kind of evidence or filing some kind of charges, just like in the U S I was going to say, just like here. And so they, they came to time. They didn't have any reason to keep him. They released him. This guy got mad about it. And he went off base and tracked the guy down and ambushed him and killed him. Wow. <laughs> and he said, yeah. well, he was doing it before he could go back and join the Taliban again or Al-Qaeda or whoever. Yeah, which we had no evidence of or we would have kept him. Right. So there you go. Yeah. Um, so all of those people were pardoned. Uh, just another example of you know yeah. people committing war crimes and getting away with it. Yeah. And you know all of these stories, the thing that they have in common is that the people who committed the criminal act yeah. got away. And yep. the people who told the public that their government was committing a criminal act were the people suffered that were prosecuted. The, suffered the consequences. And um, Peter Van Buren, uh, I, I have a quote from him talking about this. I think he was talking specifically about John Kiriakou in this case, but I, I could be wrong. Yeah. Um, but he said, In the national security state that rules the roost in Washington, talking out of turn about a crime has become the only possible crime. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's what I have about that. I, I did want to mention we've got a little bit of time left. I mean, we you know we we can fill in another ten <laughs> minutes, yeah. um, probably. I, I did uh, come across this article that was written by a former spook of some kind. Um, you know, uh, and it was in USA Today. It's called Trump impeachment. Government deep state isn't what you think, and America really needs it. <laughs> okay. And so this person currently Ooh. works for the Center for a New American Security, which is this neocon, you know, think tank thing. Yeah. Um, and so I just wanted to read this one paragraph because I found okay. this, like, I found this really interesting. Um, Andrea Kendall Taylor is the writer. And since it's Andrea and it's a hyphenated name, I assume it's a girl. We can assume. 
<laughs> yeah, assuming gender is a bad thing these days. You know? <laughs> that is true. Um, but we'll go with that and say she <laughs> writes. Yes. Uh, ultimately, the administration's reaction to the whistleblower and its efforts to discredit the intelligence community threaten America's democracy. The administration's efforts to promote a false narrative about a deep state reflect tactics used by other leaders who have dismantled democracy. I have studied the way that these leaders amplify threat perceptions, including from false enemies within, to justify tactics and actions they portray as necessary for containing the threat. They then use these tactics to slowly dismantle constraints and expand their personal power. Now, I, I would argue she has a lot of things backwards. Yeah, uh, that's the point. I mean, I, it made I mean, me think it's immediately. It's almost like opposite world. Like. Yeah, it made me think immediately about um, the expression about what you accuse us, others of is what you are. Yeah. Um, yeah. And because <laughs> the what she does here is she says that you know that they amplify threat perceptions. You mean like an, a president working for the. Russians or the Ukrainians or the whoever. <laughs> yeah. um, whoever it is this week. You know, or the president that's going to dismantle democracy. That's not amplifying a threat perception. I mean, come yeah. on. Right. Well, exactly. And the, and the whole idea that the deep state is here for our benefit <laughs> is just absolutely insane. I mean, the people, for, for better or for worse, because you know I'm not a Trump supporter, but the people elected Trump to to drive these things out and get rid of the deep state and things just like that. I mean, he basically campaigned on it. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea that, that he's actually doing these things, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, if, he, if he actually is, which I don't personally believe he is, but yeah. I mean, a lot of people do. We're going to come back around to some of that, but um, the, the thing that he has done that actually seems to be the crime, according to these people. Yeah. Is that he wants to be friendly with the Russians. Yep. And he held up military aid yeah. to the Ukrainians. Yeah. That's that's all they have. And, and the, this what, is what, what he makes it on, so... though. Like, I want to be friends with the Russians. Yep. There's no reason to be... Uh, um, we're both antagonistic we're, yeah, to a, the other country that has thousands of nuclear weapons. Yeah, exactly. I actually, that brings up another point. I, I was listening to this today. So um, Scott Horton had an interview uh, with one of the guys, other guys, that, one of the whistleblowers we talked about tonight, um, yeah. the uh, with Daniel Ellsberg. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, Daniel Ellsberg, beyond being the guy who released the Pentagon Papers, is also a nuclear expert. Oh, really? Um, like, that's actually what he did that's in his... the government. Like, the, oh, okay. he, um, you know, uh, like, formed and revised nuclear policy. Um, he was instrumental in some of the good changes that we've had, like, you know, the no first strike kind of stuff and yeah. things like that. Anyway, um, he was talking about, and this is just kind of chilling, right? Uh, he was talking about a Trident submarine. Okay. So this is one of the nuclear warhead uh, armed submarines that the u.s has well that the u.s has <laughs> yeah i'll get back to the other part of that <laughs> yeah. um so uh, a trident submarine um can carry 24 nuclear missiles okay each of those nuclear missiles can um maintain up to eight separate warheads wow really yeah holy crap <laughs> um and each of those warheads is 300 to 450 kilotons. Yeah. Now, just for reference, the the bomb that obliterated Hiroshima yeah. was 15 kilotons. <laughs> so they're 20 to 30 times as strong as the the bomb that, that destroyed Hir Hiroshima. Yeah. Each one. Each one, yeah. 24 missiles, eight warheads each. Yeah. All twenty to thirty times the size of the Hiroshima warhead, just and it, and in floating fact, around. Just for reference, the Hiroshima warhead, the A bomb, as opposed to the H bomb that we have now. The yeah. A bomb was a plutonium bomb. The yeah. plutonium bomb is now the trigger for the H bombs. So yeah. what we dropped yeah. on Hiroshima and Nagasaki yeah. is now the trigger to the existing <laughs> bomb. All right. Wow. So and and just to again try and put that in perspective. Kilotons is thousand tons of TNT. So we're talking about 
600 to 900 million pounds wow. of TNT, the equivalent explosion. Yeah. Right. So um, what he was saying was that if just one of these submarines yeah. launched all of its missiles, <laughs> that it would do enough damage to the environment that approximately half of the world's population would starve. Wow. Wow. Three to four Three to four billion Billion. people (laughs) would starve if just one of these submarines launched all of its missiles. And we have dozens of them. Yeah. And the Russians do too. I was fixed to say, and so do the Russians. Yeah, exactly. So it's just kind of chilling. I I was... And (laughs) and to think that... It gave me the shivers just like listening to him talk about it. It was was crazy. Yeah. And to think that we want to be antagonistic to yeah. this government and, and, like, yeah and, and that's and the poke, point right there poke the bear like yeah. why poke the bear well they have this idea that um that a con- that you could have a conventional war with the russians that wouldn't lead to nuclear war there's no way and i, mean, there's, I, I just there's, don't think so there's just no way i mean i don't I, I don't believe that and here's my proposal on the thing like we have as much military like we have this a uh, military that is Larger than the next 10, I think, militaries in the world combined. I've seen some stats on that, yeah. Um, We spend five times as much on our military as the Chinese. We spend 10 times as much on our military as the Russians. Yeah. We have enough conventional weapons to destroy any country on the planet. No, uh, we have enough conventional weapons to destroy any country on the planet. Yeah. So why don't we take the first step? Yeah. And disarm our nuclear potential. Because yeah. we don't even need it to destroy any country in the world. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So let's let's do a good I mean, we don't have to point that out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but let's let's go ahead and make the good faith gesture and disarm, dismantle our nuclear stockpile. Now, yeah. of course, Trump's trying to do the opposite. He wants oh, to, yeah. he wants rebuild to it. rebuild it. Yeah. Um that's a lot of money though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it Raytheon, General Dynamics, you know, all these companies, they, they like nuclear weapons are expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's it's big money for the economy. But well, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, you know, we could take that first step. There, there would be no harm in it. Yeah, like this idea of mutually assured destruction, preventing people. I think there's something to it. Obviously, like yeah, it's worked so far. Yeah. Until it doesn't. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, what do you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and no, what? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and then so, what? Yeah. I, I recommend everybody go because uh, it's free. Um, oh gosh, what's his name? Uh, the guy that go, does Dan Carlin. Ah. Go download Dan Carlin's hardcore history uh, called Destroyer of Worlds. It's ah. like it's like six hours. Um, we we but, started that on a road trip a while back. Yeah, I've it's, listened to it twice already. But yeah, uh, yeah, so two and a half times, I guess, because yeah. we got about halfway through it on our our road trip. Yeah. Um, it's good, but, but it's definitely like, it's it's just like what you were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. It's just it's chilling the the mm-hmm. you know that that potential is just sitting there. Yeah, and, and that's about the early years. Yeah, that, that's yeah, about we didn't the, even the get aftermath into it. to the original bombs being dropped. Yeah, to the a bombs being dropped. Yeah. Um. And uh, and it's just about the you know the all the duck and cover and all that stuff afterwards. Yeah. Um. And and it's a, it's as people were starting to recognize just how dangerous all this stuff. What could we be. were sitting on. Yeah. yeah. Um. And so, but it's 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 really interesting and fascinating and full of information, and it'll give you a new perspective because we don't talk about this stuff anymore. No. No. I mean, we talked about it some when I was still a kid, but we don't talk about it anymore. No, and I think that, and that's kind of what the scary thing is about all of this is you have um, there's a rep- complacency. Well, with, well, I was going to say with our representatives mm-hmm. because that's what worries me is I almost use the word our leaders, and I, I, I caught myself. Um, but our representatives, I mean, they they don't even have the perspective on on what's real, what we're really sitting on with this, mm-hmm. um, like like they need to have. Because, I mean, or we wouldn't have the type of political environment with, as far as foreign policy is concerned, that we do. I mean, it's the, what, what we're doing right now is built on complacency. Yeah. I mean, it is. Well, um, unless you have something more on that. 
I don't. Um, I would, like I, we, you were talking about, I would recommend everybody Google Operation Northwood. Yeah. And just read up on that because I I, got, I felt like, like I said, I gave you an overview of it tonight. Mm-hmm. But um, I thought that was a really interesting thing to look at, yeah. like to, to read up on. And um, I'd like to start. So I'm sure... People, Mike will have no know nothing of this because he's not on Facebook. But people on Facebook will know about the. I log on once a week to <laughs> upload the podcast. Well, everybody on Facebook and the Facebooks knows about the the Epstein didn't kill himself memes. They're mm-hmm. everywhere. I think we should try to start to say. I'm you, aware. You, of you're this. aware of that. Okay. okay. <laughs> Only through me I, telling you about no, it, probably. No, I listen to the No Agenda show. They talk oh, okay. About it. So well, there you go. Then you have this information. I'm just saying. I think we should start an operation. Northwoods when that's the same way just convincing people to google it yeah. and and because I, I just I feel like that's something, something catchy we gotta come up with something I need some help out there guys I got an <laughs> idea and I need some help let's get it implemented let's do it well I, there's books written on almost all this stuff I, I'm like what we gave tonight on all of these things is just a overview just a bare overview I mean there's yeah. plenty of information about the My Lai and My K massacres there's plenty of information about the Pentagon Papers, the Gulf of Tonkin incident, CIA torture program, NSA's domestic spying program, um, the Iraq and Afghan war logs, besides the fact that you can just go straight to the source on a lot of that stuff, too. Like oh, yeah. Just read the original. Well, and that's that's with the Operation Northwoods the same way. Like Those documents have been released, so yeah. I mean, you can pull the actual documents mm-hmm. and read them. So think- that's But that's that needs to be where the campaign is at, is to get the people... Get open more people's eyes about these things. Yeah, you know? maybe we can convince them that the uh, the gas attacks in Syria weren't committed by the Syrian government. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. Maybe. No. Um, now I only have one more like little thing, and okay. this is just uh, another thing that I just kind of found interesting um, because it's so representative of how so much media is presented in this country at this point. Yeah. Um, so I read in the New York Times. Uh, and I only get one article a month or whatever because because <laughs> you know, you're not a member a or whatever. Of course, yeah. you know, if you go to different places, but anyway. Yeah. Um, also, by the way, I learned this. This yeah. is not that I'm advocating this. Okay. Because it's probably some kind of theft. <laughs> it's one form or another. Um, but uh, if when you pull up the a New York Times article, if you've already looked at one article and they're going to pop up that you must subscribe if you want to see this article thing that, that overlays it and you can't get back to the original article. Yeah. Well, I mean, you kind of can. But yeah. um, what I have learned is that when you when you select the article, when you click on the article and it right. pops up, if you really quickly hit Control A and Control C. Yeah. Then you can copy the article into a Word document, <laughs> and that subscription thing doesn't get in your way. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> and that's also absolutely a form of theft. <laughs> but yeah. I like it. But I like it. <laughs> like I said, I don't advocate this. Yeah. Just throwing it out just, there. Yeah. I, this is just something that I have become aware of yeah, through yeah. experimentation. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in the New York Times, they had they published an open letter from thirty something writers yeah. uh, that was saying that they they didn't they wanted the media and everybody else to stop using the term quid pro quo. Oh, really? Yeah, um, because the people don't really understand it, and and I'm just going to read from the article. Well, it's here. funny, just funny before you do that, that you mentioned that because mm-hmm. every time they mention quid pro quo, or they did the other night, last night when I was watching the news, every time they mentioned it, they defined it. Mm. Every time, which to the point it was annoying. This for that. Yeah, yeah. They really every every time they said it, they said they they defined it, and I was like, man, what the <laughs> hell? Like, do people not know any Latin anymore. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this is this is from the article. Right. And I just I just found this funny. So don't use I'm summarizing part of it and then I'll go okay. into the quote. So don't use quid pro quo and then quote. That is not a crime. The crime is President Trump's demand for something that will benefit him personally. But using this neutral phrase, which means simply this for that. Yeah. As synonymous with criminality is confusing to the public. It makes the case more complicated, more open to question, and more difficult to plead. Please use words that refer only to criminal behavior here. Use bribery or extortion 
to describe Mr. Trump's demand to President Vladimir Zelensky of Ukraine, making it very clear that this is a crime. The more we hear words that carry moral imputations, the more we understand the criminal nature of the act. Please also stop using the phrase, dig up dirt. (laughs) This slang has unsavory connotations. Instead, please use the more formal, direct, and powerful phrase, create false evidence, or find incriminating evidence, (laughs) or the simpler, tell lies about. (laughs) Now, this is three paragraphs of begging the question. Yeah. Without question. (laughs) Yeah. It just assumes that there was some kind of criminal act. Yeah. yeah. It assumes that that Biden is didn't do anything wrong. Which he's not. That (laughs) that (laughs) that uh, false evidence would have to be created. Yeah, right. (laughs) To find anything. Or to they would have to tell lies about what was done in Ukraine. Yeah. You know. And then so just beyond those just like really simple and absurd points of begging the question. Yeah. And I mean that in the traditional sense for those that Are that aren't familiar. Yeah. Like begging the question is actually like assuming the answer. Yeah. Before you yeah. yeah. Um so anyway, the other thing that I thought was really interesting, and this comes up over and over again, and I think this is really funny because I feel like nobody's really thought this through. Or <laughs> They don't expect us to, or something. Yeah. Um, the uh, <laughs> the whole thing about President Trump's demand for something being an investigation into Biden yeah. that will benefit him personally. Yeah. Now it'll only benefit him personally yeah. if, if Biden is actually something. corrupt, yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. Otherwise, yeah. it doesn't benefit him personally. Yeah. Well, and it goes back to the the argument. I mean. Anything Trump does would benefit him personally. I mean, like, like being a good president would benefit him personally. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. like, and is that too. is that a crime? Apparently, <laughs> it's looking that way. Yeah, apparently, it's looking that. Not way. Not that I'm saying he's a good president, but no, he's I'm being, not saying that either. Yeah. I'm just saying he's being pressed about some of the best things that he's doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like. The things that have touched off the the like worst reactions have been pulling troops out of Syria, yeah, and holding up military aid to Ukraine, yeah, uh, and saying that he would like to be friends with Russia, yeah, like, yeah, and those are <laughs> argu- yeah, very arguably the best things he's done. So. Now he's been applauded for firing missiles into Syria. <laughs> I don't know. That seemed pretty presidential, if you ask me. I'm <laughs> yeah, just saying. Apparently, if you ask a lot of people, that was the that was it's the, the most response. presidential thing he's done. I guess so. I guess so. A lot of people were happy about leaving the Iran deal. Yeah. Um, a, lot a lot of people, of people weren't uh, too. So that yeah. one got kind of a mixed reaction. But well, I feel like more people that are are more to our side would agree with that. With that, getting out of that was a bad idea. Yeah. Well, it took away the excuse for war. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which is now back on the table. Yep. And we're working on it. (laughs) All right. right. Well, um, that may as well wrap up there. Uh, So, you know, read about this stuff. Also, again, I would like some feedback um, on whether you want me to start putting notes with my sources and so forth, Uh, at least when we do these kind of you know, dives into a lot of historical stuff. Yeah. Um, Definitely did some deep diving tonight. I thought it was fun. Yeah, I hope it was good. Um, and let me know if you just like the the cast in general. Um, yeah. I, I Some of the historical stuff we've done in the past, I've had people come back and say that they didn't really care for it much. But I also had people at the same time say that was the best thing that we'd done. So, <laughs> so, yeah. But I, I am curious what, what people in general think. Um, so feedback's good. I like feedback. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of feedback, uh, good or bad. I prefer good, yeah. uh, but good or bad. Um, yeah. There was something else that I was asking people, though, like beyond putting notes in, something else. I don't know. I don't remember now. I don't I don't either. Oh, well. Uh, kind of go back to the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> and do whatever I said then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, find out what I asked about that. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, we'll be back. We plan to be back in a week. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, iTunes, Facebook, um, our website is thelibertymike.com and it will remain so even though I'm changing, 
um, hosting. my hosting <laughs> provider. Uh, let's see. I already renewed the uh, all the domains. Cool. By the way, uh, y'all, um, we do have uh, the libertymike.net and .org. Ah. Uh, they redirect to the libertymike.com. Right now. But we have all of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. So you can't snake that from under us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want info, I guess you can have it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, so like, subscribe, share, give feedback. Um, that's everything, right? Thanks. So. Is that all the stuff that I usually say? I feel like it is. All right. Well, and we'll be back in the week uh, when we finally get this right. Uh, in the meantime, try to stay free. Train how you fight. Ciao. Later.